Hi everybody, my name is Holly. Today I am coming with a much more casual video than normal. I didn't want to do the whole setup. I don't have books to hold up. I don't have the video editing software right now to put images up in the corner. So I'm about to talk about five books and we have to do it without visuals, friends. I hope that's okay. I kind of decided that I want to change up how I'm doing my uh, wrap up videos. I really like wrapping everything up by month, but I already do that in my notebook. I don't have to do that on video. The last wrap up I made, I had so many books, the video was so long, it was obnoxious. I don't mind watching long videos, but I know not everybody likes that, and so I'd like to keep it a bit shorter. And I'd also like to not worry <laughs> so much about having to cut down what I'm saying, just because there are so many books to get through. So I'm figuring, instead of wrapping up at the end of the month, every five books or so, I'm going to wrap up those five books. I know lots of people do this, and I really like it. So I am adopting it as my own, and that is what we are doing today. First book I'm going to talk about is called Z, a Zelda Fitzgerald novel by Therese Ann Fowler, I believe. Yes. It's basically just a biopic of Zelda Fitzgerald, so the wife of F. Scott Fitzgerald, author of The Great Gatsby, about her life. It follows her meeting Scott and marrying him and moving to New York, and then everything that follows from there. And this I listened to an audiobook. I have been aware of this book for a long time and it's been like sort of in the back of my mind as a book that I really want to read and then I came across it on audiobook and I'm like, duh, finally, let's listen to it on audiobook. I really like sort of story of the Fitzgeralds and Flappers in New York in the 1920s and I really liked how this book did not glamorize absolutely any of that. Like she sought glamours, you know, her and her husband sought that fun, carefree lifestyle. And I like that this book wasn't glamorizing it, it wasn't glamorizing her or making her out to be some hero. She, you know, did not great things in her life and she did things that people might not approve of, but she was just so human. And even though this isn't a proper biography, it's heavily fictionalized, it is very clearly well researched at the same time. I was impressed by the unerring sense of reminding people that she's not this, like, basically figure in American mythology. She's a real person. She wasn't just a flapper. She wasn't just a, you know, woman doing bad things in a conservative time. She was living her life and doing her best. What it really made me want to do is actually read more actual biographies of different authors and people in their lives. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I think in the future, like in the near future, I'd like to actually pursue that a lot more. I believe I gave the book three out of five stars. As much as I liked it, it could be really dull at times. And even though I appreciate that it didn't glamorize and just focus on the flapper aspect of it, I really like flappers and I was kind of hoping to get a little bit more of that feel of that flappers 1920 New York sort of feel and there wasn't a lot of that and I get why and that's just an issue with <laughs> being let down by my own expectations but there was just something it wasn't quite reaching for a four star read. I guess you know you can only go so far when you're trying to depict a real person's life and not go too far into the realm of fantasy and imagination. The next book that I listened to on audiobook was called Ominous Voice by Hannah Kahn. And this is a middle grade book and she has another book out, I can't even remember what it's called right now, but I think it's like linked to Little Women and with the movie having been out, I think maybe that's why it was sort of making the rounds. But I, I want to read Little Woman before I start going off reading books that are based off Little Woman. <laughs> so I was looking at what else she wrote because the covers for her books are gorgeous. And then this one came up as Ominous Voice and it looked really sweet. Ominous Voice is a middle grade novel and it follows this girl named Amina and she is in middle school and she has a really, really beautiful singing voice, but she's full of way too much stage fright to ever sing in front of people. And then all of a sudden, her mom and dad make her sign up for this um, competition that their mosque is holding for us to be reading like a passage from the Quran. And she's very, very nervous about having to do this in front of people. And so there's all this anxiety for her dealing with that. There's also stuff going on. She's having a fight with her best friend. Her father's older brother is coming to visit from Pakistan and they're very, very nervous about this because he tends to be a very traditional guy and they're worried that, you know, or she's worried that she's not going to 
uh, live up to his expectations and then therefore let her dad down. And so there's all this family stuff and her own uh, singing ambition and her friendship stuff all weaving together to make a really lovely story. And it was just such a sweet middle grade book. It does deal with some very heavy topics. There is, and I would definitely put trigger warnings on this for Islamophobia, but I feel like it handled it with a lot of hope. Like at the end, there's all these interfaith, um, I don't know what to say without spoiling it, but it's just a really beautiful and hopeful book, not just for Amina, but like for her entire community and what that represents for Muslim people at large. And I thought it was just such a sweet and powerful little book. And I think I gave it four out of five stars. If not, then I gave it five out of five stars. It was gorgeous. The next book that I read was Beast by Bree Spangler. And this is a YA book. It came out a few years ago. And it's about this guy and he um, really hates the way that he looks. He's really really tall for his age he's really hairy and muscular and just big he's just this unusually large human being and he is full of negative self-thoughts about it he hates the way he looks hates everything about himself because of that it leads him down a really bad mental place so he ends up in a uh, sort of group therapy session where, you know, he's just ignoring things and not paying attention to people, but ends up making friends with one of the girls in the group. And he misses what they were saying in the first meeting. And this is like in the synopsis, but he misses that this girl, whose name I can't even remember right now, is actually trans. So he starts falling for her and talking with her and hanging out with her and becoming friends with her and kind of falling in love with her. And he doesn't realize that she's trans. I will admit, I don't fully know how to feel about this book. I'm a cis person. I don't know that the trans conversations and the plot of our main character not knowing that the girl he's falling for is trans is in good taste. I think because there's that sense of mm, high school English, don't feel me, dramatic irony where the audience knows what's going on but the character doesn't does kind of change things. It's not a plot twist to us. Otherwise, I thought the characters were really well written and developed. They were dynamic and interesting. It was definitely a lot better than I was expecting. I went into it with pretty low expectations, but I thought considering it's rather a slim book that it really packed a lot of punch with what it did do. And I liked the plot, you know, the plot didn't just evolve around this. He's wondering whether he has some sort of hormonal thyroid issue, like basically giantism, and he has some mental health stuff going on, he has stuff with his mom, and with his dead father, and with his best friend, who's not that great of a person. So I liked that it was dealing with so much, and did it really succinctly, and without everything feeling lost and all over the place. Overall, I think I gave it three out of five stars. It was a pretty good book. I just don't know how I feel about the revelation that the love interest was trans. I am going to mispronounce this, I know I am, but the next book that I read was The Little Book of Huge, Hige, <laughs> however it is actually pronounced. I listened to it on audiobook, I still don't know how to say it, by Meek Wiking? Mike Wiking? I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Again, I listened to this on audiobook and I was trying to practice saying it and I still am pretty sure I cannot say it. This is just a book I saw floating around, it sort of became popular a couple years ago. It was available. I wanted to try something different, a little bit of non-fiction. I don't usually gear towards self-help-ish titles, but I was intrigued. Basically this book is looking at this concept that exists in Danish culture, Hugge, Hugge, Hige, I don't know, that has to do with happiness and comfort. So he's exploring what it is, what it means, how to set it up in your life, like physically, from how you dress to how you eat, to how you decorate your room. Um, things like that, how to cultivate it. It's made me just every now and then, especially now that I have a couple weeks off of work with all the coronavirus stuff going on, just deep breath and worry about making myself comfortable, but making myself happy and at peace and just keeping that in mind. It's not like I've revolutionized the way I decorated my place to be more huye or I give up. Uh, but it, it just makes me a little more aware of it. The last book I'm gonna talk about today is called Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman, so father and son combo there. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. I thought it sounded really good. I should not have read it. It was at the start of all of this corona stuff becoming like really serious and at the forefront of people's attention, like just before everything was shutting down and people were being told to stay home and then like into that, 
and it made me extremely anxious. <laughs> Basically dry is a very possible <laughs> near future um, kind of apocalypse event. A couple years ago California was suffering from, and the west coast in general, was suffering from a lot of drought issues. And so this book was like taking it further, it's like what if these droughts keep going and we run out of water and we have none coming in. And so it's about a, a few teens trying to survive in this waterless setting. So it's a very fast paced apocalypse book because everything falls apart like that. You need water. So it was this really suddenly dark and desperate end of the world kind of book, but all just in this little space and how quickly things can fall apart. I know some people are having a blast reading apocalypse and uh, quarantine kind of books right now. I'm not one of those people. I have had to gravitate more towards lighter stuff. <laughs> because it's just too much for me. Anything that is reminding me of coronavirus is making me anxious. And this book I almost stopped and was going to finish later, and I probably should have, but I didn't because it was making me so anxious. I did enjoy it. It was a good book. It was a really good exploration. The characters were cool. It was definitely well thought out, like plotted out and planned as to what might happen given the situation. Given everything going on right now, it was not the book I should have been reading. <laughs> But I'm trying not to let that affect my rating. I'm pretty sure I gave it 3 out of 5 stars or 3.5. I think it was on the fence of 3 or 4 stars. It was really well done. It was really good. It wasn't the greatest thing ever. I think I was expecting so much more. But it wasn't bad either. I don't... Like, I like the writing. I like the plot. I like the characters. I like the way it ended. It just didn't have enough extra I think to even push me to four stars it was just okay and that might have been my state of mind reading it at the time maybe it is a bit better I'd say it's like a three and a half star anyways thank you for watching uh hopefully this new system for me works I will be back to talk about my next five books thank you bye